Growing Healthier Habits June 8, 2014 Have you ever given it any thought why self-control can be so difficult to depend on? Each dear child of God has this skill, this inborn ability, yet you seldom give yourself credit for possessing such a skill. Self-control doesn't linger for long, so when you have the opportunity to make use of this skill, it is essential to not allow it to pass by. When dealing with self-control, we have seen how easy it can be for many of you to focus mainly on your failures and allow your successes to be paled in comparison. Self-control is basically and fundamentally there to help you achieve a goal. And if you fail to reach a certain conclusion to a project or a goal that you have been working on, you see it that you have failed to control yourself in that situation, instead of seeing the situation as something to grow from. Self-control is easier seen when you are trying to cut down eating foods like potato chips as a nighttime snack, or cake for breakfast, and suddenly you crave those exact foods. If you allow your cravings to win, you somehow allow these cravings to become failures, instead of telling yourself you'll try again and be firm with your inner self, the part of you that thinks it needs those chips or cake. You do have the power to say no to your temptations, it just takes a little practice, perseverance and willpower. If you tend to focus on your failures over your successes, then isn't it time dear ones to learn how to manage your self-control? to move away from what tempts you and from those frustrating failures and boost your determined willpower. We want you to continue moving positively in the right direction and to achieve your goals, but first you need to learn to manage your self-control. Believe it or not dear ones, meditation actually trains your brain to become quiet and to focus on the peaceful moment. Meditation helps to improve your emotional intelligence, and that is something every child of God can improve upon. Simple methods found within practicing mindfulness that involves a few minutes each day just focusing on your in-breath and out-breath, being aware of all your senses, where you are. As you improve your level of awareness, you improve your resistance to destructive impulses. The more you meditate dear ones, the calmer you are and the more self-control you will have. Eating is essential to your survival, but it is in eating where many of you need to learn to curb your impulses and control what it is you think you want to eat over what is healthful and beneficial. Remember dear ones, your beautiful and magnificent brain burns a lot of glucose whenever you try to exert self-control. If you feel your sugar is low during the day, you are most likely going to submit to the temptation of eating sugary foods. In truth dear ones, the sugary foods you consume to help bring your sugar elevations up will raise them quickly, but leave you drained and even more tired once the sugar high is over. Instead of grabbing cake or candy, think about selecting a food that provides a slow burn of sugar for your body. There are many snacking foods available now that contain rice, and some with brown rice and other whole grains. Only you can keep yourself out of trouble when it comes to the food you eat. Eating lots of candy and cake may be tasty, but you know eventually those kinds of food will bring more harm than good. When you are hungry, eat, but choose something that helps your body, something that is good and nutritious. Another area where self-control is needed for many dear children of God is in exercise. There are many athletes in the world that train and practice every day for the area of their speciality, but there are also non-athletes everyday people that know they could exercise more. Comprehend dear ones that if you are able to get your body moving even for a short time of 10 minutes, you will be able to release a neurotransmitter in your brain called GABA, and it is this neurotransmitter that soothes your never-ending working brain and helps you control those pesky impulses. If you have trouble resisting the temptation to lash out at someone or to give another a piece of your mind, instead of approaching them and going with your impulse, keep on walking, go for a walk, and by the time you get back home, or to work, or to wherever you were going, that impulse will be diminished and you will have regained self-control, simply because you chose not to allow it to draw you in. Every person gets tired. You work long hours, take care of your family, and sometimes are socially active. All of this contributes to your brain's abilities to absorb glucose, it basically becomes slower and diminish the more tired you become. 
If you are not giving yourself enough sleep, you'll likely choose a sugary snack to compensate the energy you are lacking from not sleeping. If you are really trying to apply more self-control over your eating style and choices, include getting enough sleep every night. The more well-rested you are, the less you'll be tempted by foods that are more of a hindrance than a benefit. Your desire and need seems to come and go similarly like the tide of an ocean. When you are feeling the strength of an impulse, try waiting it out, exert your willpower, and say no to the temptation and mean it. Give yourself about 10 minutes before you allow yourself to submit to the impulse. By waiting those 10 minutes, the desire or need to have what tempted you will likely be lessened. What often occurs dear ones is when you've been fighting a vicious circle of trying to control yourself and determine you have failed more than you have succeeded, you end up harshly judging yourself, criticizing yourself, and being in disgust with yourself for allowing yourself to be drawn into participating in negative behavior, consuming foods that are not beneficial or anything else you've been trying to say no to. What tends to happen dear ones when you allow strong emotions to take over, you are more than likely to overindulge as a way to soothe your emotions, to soothe the offending behavior. It is critical dear ones, instead of slipping further away from self-control, you really need to forgive yourself and move on. Don't ignore how the mistakes you made made you feel, just don't sink into them. What is needed instead is shifting your attention to improve in the areas where you failed, and to strengthen the parts of you that are weaker and bring up your resolve. What is also necessary dear ones is to remember that it is you and only you that manage your self-control. By being able to recognize the moments when you are fighting with yourself, and choosing to wait, to ignore, or choose something better that is more beneficial will take time. But with time you are able to increase your emotional intelligence, and grow healthier habits that will last a lifetime when you are seriously committed to giving yourself the love, care, and attention you truly deserve. Self-control can be managed, just like anything. First you have to admit there is a problem, then you must devise a plan and commit to it in order for it to work, and we know you can succeed in anything when you apply heart and soul effort. And if you need supportive help or guidance, do not fear asking for it, we of the divine are always here to offer guidance, and there are many others among you that are able to offer you non-biased support. There are many places and people that are able and qualified to help, to guide, and to support you. It does take a brave step to ask for help, but it will be a step in the right direction. I am Melchizedek through Julie Miller. SpiritualNetworks.com